Hi, in this video I'm going to talk you through how to use my new slideshow device for Ableton Live and Max for Live. I created it simply because I was looking for a way to have an automated image slideshow, uh, but there was nothing like this already on maxforlive.com, so I decided to make it myself. The idea is that you drop in a folder of images and the device will alternate between them, crossfading between images as it goes. You can set the length of time each image is displayed for, as well as how long it takes to crossfade between them. The slideshow is outputted to a pop-up window, which you can then send to an external monitor or a projector for live performance. On a Mac, it will also automatically output to Siphon, meaning that you can send the slideshow to something like Resolume Avenue or other VJ software that accepts Siphon as an input uh, for further processing or to add more visual effects. I'll be showing an example of this later, uh, but for now, let's have a look how we set this up. So once you've downloaded the device, uh, just drop it into your user library and then drag it into an empty MIDI track. The next thing is to drop in a folder of images. So just drag in the whole folder. And you'll notice now that you've got two identical lists of the images that you dropped in. What you can do is manually just select images that you like and then you can crossfade between them both. Let's just make this window a little bit larger. Or you can use the select dials here to switch between the images. And again, you can just crossfade these manually. So the select dials and the crossfade and these controls, which I'll come to later, are all mapped to push. Uh, so you can control these from your push device or you can automate them within Ableton Live. If you want to just have the slideshow running, then you turn on the auto button. And what this will do, it'll crossfade between the two um, collections of images here automatically and it'll alternate them as it goes. You can choose which image you want to start at. You can set the length time, so how long each image is displayed for. In this case, it's 10 seconds and how long it takes to crossfade between the two images and in this case it's three seconds. It will list the images in alphabetical order. Um, so if you want to order them in a particular way, either order them alphabetically or number them. Or you can click random and it will just select a random image as the next image to crossfade to. You can turn the window on and off. And as I mentioned before, this outputs automatically to Siphon. Um, so if you've got some VJ software running, it will pipe it directly to that as well. So you've also got control here over the zoom amount. For each of the sides, this is the left side and this is for the right side. And you've got pan controls as well. And let's just turn the automation off for now. Again, you can control these by just moving the dials. Or you can automate these. Um, but one thing I do find useful, and the thing I wanted to do originally, uh, which is why I built the device, is mapping these to LFO devices. And I've got a project saved, which I'm going to show you now. So here, I've got each of the dials for zoom and pan mapped to LFO devices. I'll just show you the left side as an example. Um, they're set to a very, very low rate, so it zooms in and out very, very slowly. And the same goes for the pan. The pan moves very, very slowly as well. And with this set to different values for left and right, you can create a kind of pseudo Ken Burns effect as you're mixing between the two lots of images. So I mentioned earlier about outputting this to Siphon. Uh, here I'm using a Siphon plugin for Ableton Live, which is part of the Ebo Suite range of VJ plugins uh, for Max for Live. Uh, I'll leave a link for this in the description. It's running a little slowly because I'm recording my screen at the same time, uh, but you get the idea of what you can do here with further uh, visual effects. I've got it here going through a kaleidoscope effect and a bulge twist effect. 
Um, because we've got movement running from the uh, the pan and the zoom, uh, that creates kind of a more of an interesting effect with the kaleidoscope. So that's it. Um, that's how you set it up. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Um, also, this is my first real sort of delve into Jitter on Max for Live. So this probably isn't done the most efficiently. Um, if you've got ways of suggesting improvements for this, then please let me know in the comments. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.